we can't access them. A tree has uh, branches up in the sky. We can't get there without a lot of effort or else one of these fancy blimps like they use in the rainforest. And the place in between is where we live. And so there's this connection between these three worlds. And if you look at cultures around the world, you'll find that many of them use trees as a model of the universe. I'm just going to choose one. There are many. Yggdrasil is a iconic tree of Scandinavian mythology, a great big tree. We don't know what species it was. It's, it's imaginary anyway, probably. But this great big tree, this is where the gods hung out. This is where they had their coffee breaks, where dragons played. Um, the roots extended to springs and wells and brought water in. It provided shade. And it also provided for ancient Nordic people a model of the universe with different planes of existence. There is the heavenly plane, not easily attainable. There is the uh, underground plane of existence, where you don't want to be anyway. And then there's the place where we live, right in the middle where the trunk is. Why, um, <clears throat> why, why, why trees? Why this specific thing? Well, th these are permanent features of our landscape, aren't they? We use tree imagery in our, in our daily uh, conversation. We talk about family trees. We have dendrites in our brains. We even have dollar trees now. <laughs> so trees have become <clears throat> part of our culture, part of the way that we think. But that's the architecture of the trees. What is it about trees that gives them such value in folklore and religion? Well, as I said, they can be these different planes of existence. <coughs> <clears throat> like in Yggdrasil. Um, the architecture of trees is uh, important to us. As I said, we use the term. But we also identify with them uh, culturally. Our neighbor to the north has a maple leaf on her flag. In Lebanon, we have the fabled cedar of Lebanon on the uh, flag. Even foreign places like South Carolina have <laughs> Uh, trees, a tree on their flag, and so does Fiji. Why a tree? <clears throat> Why a tree? It's because it identifies us with a place. We all have a sense of place. One of the first things we ask people is, where are you from? And that from place is a place where trees grow. And we identify with those trees. They don't move. They're uh, solid. They give us a sense of belonging in a changing world. <clears throat> now the question is, what about we Americans? Do you know that right here, right here in the Appalachians, right here in this room, we have um, people who are practitioners of tree veneration? I like that response. We have people who are <laughs> practitioners of tree veneration because on your person, or on the many of you have, you have uh, a symbol of trees that our republic has maintained for, I don't know, 60 years or so. And here it is. Here's a dime. <clears throat> have you thought about the fact that you're carrying around tree images in your pocket? Right here we have the uh, right here we have the olive, and we have a European oak on our dime. The longest circulating coin without a change in the United States. <clears throat> and here's two trees, neither of which is native, not even to North America. Why is it on our coin? <clears throat> Why is it on our coin? <laughs> I, I take it that a lot of people have not thought about tree veneration or tree worship and have just uh, thought about it in terms of um, something strange. Why, why are those on there? Well, the olive is an image of peace, isn't it? From the biblical story of Noah's Ark and the dove coming and bringing the olive branch. The oak requires a little more explanation. It was. Uh, venerated by North Europeans particularly because of its strength 
its size, its age. The Druids worshipped it. Um, they held services underneath the, uh, the tree. Last uh, summer, I was working in Tequina, uh, Italy, in Tuscany, and I noticed the coat of arms of the city of Tequina, not a well-known symbol in the United States, but here it is. And here's our same plants again. Here's the oak, clearly an oak, even has acorns on it. And here's the olive. Here's the olive tree right here. And here's a third tree, the bay tree. This is the bay tree that's used to make bay leaves that you use in cooking, Spanish cooking, Mediterranean cooking. The Latin name is Loris nobilis, the noble laurel, because it was used in ancient times to weave the crowns for the Olympic winners because it's evergreen and it's fragrant, as you know if you've used it in cooking. Um, <clears throat> so here's three trees on this um, symbol from Taquina. And we do the same thing. Here's a, uh, one of our more beautiful coins, the Walking Liberty Silver Dollar, still minted. And this lady's carrying a rather unusual bouquet. Uh, she's carrying a bouquet of branches. And these branches are, there again, a little vague here in the uh, enlargement. Here are the oak leaves, and here are the laurel leaves. Now, think a moment about this. Here we are, 2014, thousands of miles from those cultures, thousands of miles from the places where those trees grow. Um, thousands of years ago, they were worshipped, and they're still on our coins. Is that not an evidence of the enduring power of tree symbolism? Yes, it certainly is. I find it fascinating that our uh, coins say on them, in God we trust, we're a secular society, and yet we have, God, in God we trust on all of our currency. There have been movements to have this removed. But I've never seen a scene in front of the U.S. Mint in Washington, D.C., with people carrying placards saying, down with the oaks on a dime. <laughs> no, and they're, they're still there because of their enduring power of symbolism. I'd like to turn now briefly to consider how trees are used in worship in different parts of the world. Uh, drawing upon my experience in the Middle East, one, there one finds uh, rags and pieces of cloth tied to trees. Here's a Kurdish cemetery there at the top, rather bleak, it's in the winter, and you can see some of the rags tied to the trees. The idea is that a piece of clothing from the deceased is tied to the tree. The tree is living. It exhibits the cycles of life and rebirth through the seasons. When the leaves fall off and then they come back again in the spring, it's a kind of a hint of eternal life for the people. Um, another way that trees are adorned is when there is a tree that marks a place where a, a holy person is buried, as in this Druze site in southeast uh, Syria. And these claws are tied here to honor that person, but also to connect with the spirit of that person. Spirits and trees have a long association. In Buddhism, <clears throat> the bow tree is venerated because it was under the bow tree, bow tree is a kind of fig, under the, it was under the bow tree that uh, the Buddha attained enlightenment. So every place you go in Sri Lanka, even a little uh, street uh, altar like this will have a bow tree planted by it. In Christianity, the most famous tree is the tree of life. But the tree of life is pre-Christian in its use and its origin. Going back to the idea of like Yggdrasil, the different planes of existence, a model of the universe. Um, here is a picture of the <clears throat> famed Augustan peace altar in Rome. It was dedicated 9 BC. This is before Christianity, obviously. And here you can see the tree of life. See all the fancy branches here? You get almost dizzy just following those out, all those flowers and images at the tips of the branches. Now, if we go forward just a few hundred years, three or four hundred years, to this magnificent mosaic in a church in Ravenna, Italy, there we see the same image. But it is this time of the cross. And you can see the cross now is the tree of life. The tree of life is prominent in the Bible. It's mentioned several places in the Bible. In fact, the British 
historian and biologist, Alistair McGrath, has said that the Bible story can be summed up in three trees, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil in Eden, the tree that Jesus died on, and the tree of life in the book of Revelation, where the leaves are for the healing of the nations. Trees are mentioned more time in the Bible than any other living thing, except humans. So you would think that if trees have this prominent place in the Bible, that it would be Christians of all groups, active Christians, practicing Christians, who would be the most sensitive to ecological matters, right? Wrong. Uh, a large survey last year, just, just published a few months ago, shows that the average person in the pew has less concern for the environment than the man on the street. I'm sorry, the person on the street. Well, why is this? It's because of the great gulf between the secular and the sacred in our uh, society. Two battling groups. Both groups are on the same tree, but at different planes of existence, I would suggest. Now, how do we, how do we address this? There's a wonderful book by the student of comparative religion, Saeed Hussein Nasser, called Religion and the Order of Nature. If you're interested in the environment, I would commend this book to you. And what Nasser says is that what major religions need to do is to re-sacralize nature. That is, to see the divine in nature, to see the creator in nature. You don't worship nature. Tree worship is proscribed by Islam and Christianity and Judaism, but you see the sacred in nature. And I would suggest that trees as symbols of uh, culture, trees as symbols of religion, can be used as a bridge to address that gap between the secular and the sacred. Because nobody's giving up anything. Nobody's giving up any basic beliefs, just saying that we see these uh, different ways and we respect one another and we can talk about the uh, tree semiotics that way. <clears throat> Well, I, uh, I hope you don't think that tree worship is uh, only the purview of the tall, uh, malformed, obscure, collector of obscure books, as in the story of Sherlock, but that it actually has potential right now in our day and age to further the discussion between warring groups who are concerned about the environment. Anyway, that's my 10 cents worth. Thank you. Thank you.